JP Morgan coin, what they really need is Brian Brooks approval uh, for the issuance of stable coins. I know, I know that that letter is sitting in draft form um, as an interpretive letter to grant authorization of stable coin issuance to nationally chartered banks, such as JP Morgan. Um, I'd expect that to go out. Um, I got a call the other last evening um, and it, from a senior official at the OCC and basically they are full pedal. Everything needs to get out the door by 120. Um, I would fully expect that by January 20th, we will have one to four uh, nationally chartered crypto banks. That's awesome. That could coincide very nicely with the new administration's desire to distribute stimulus monies. Will you not, do you see that uh, synergy, Jameson? Is that part of the impetus behind the move, you think? It, it could be a means. Um, what I'm hearing more is that they will let the banks build their own digital currencies. I, you know, there was a proposal in some draft for, I think it was actually in the CARES Act even originally to create a US digital dollar central bank, you know. Yeah, CBC. version one of the CARES Act, it got cut out. Yeah, and I think the larger push is to let the private industry build it. And that's generally how those things have been built out in the past is, but if you allow banks to issue stable coins and you view it just as a technology, as a modern form of payments and a modern check, then what you really see is you know, nothing new. So, you know, a JP Morgan coin, if that's available to consumers, could be deposited at Wells Fargo, and my Wells Fargo coin could be deposited at Bank of America, and they can just on the back end handle that clearing. Jameson, I, I have a question for you. Just, just because you said there's probably four more that will come on uh, from bank uh, chartered in the, uh, by 120, are you saying in addition to both Avanti and Kraken? You're saying there'll be a total of six? Well, Avanti and Kraken are Wyoming. Those are state and those, uh, that still has significant problems. Just because they have the state charter, they still would need 50 state money transmission licenses, well, 49 in addition, right? And they're, wherever they choose to operate, they would have to apply 50 different sets, sets of rules. The nice thing about an OCC federal charter, um, you know, much like what SoFi just got, but that wasn't explicitly with, uh, for digital assets, is that you get to pick your state's laws and apply it across the nation. So that's kind of why you see a lot of like high, uh, you know, payday lenders are technically South Dakota trusts. So they, because South Dakota doesn't have a usury cap. Okay. Then I, I have another question since you're the expert on this. John, am I allowed to ask another question? Is this all right? This is just, just because, to just because you're, we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, digital, digital dollars has obviously China has been all about their digital one. And, you know, I hate to see America cede any advantage that we might have. Is there a way for the U S to catch back up? Because you, you talked about Russia and you know, people in the UK talking about getting on the digital one and getting off the U S dollar. What, what are your thoughts on all that? I mean, I think the approach that uh, at least the current administration is taking in terms of having it be granting the authority for the U.S. digital dollar to be built by private industry uh, is the way to catch back up. You know, do we really want our government creating this? Do we trust them to catch back up to China from a technology perspective? Um, I think we have a better shot at that catch up by putting it out there to private companies to help develop. That's that's reassuring to hear, especially I. I hope that China gets a black eye over this whole ant IPO issue and, you know, and ripping the, you know, ripping it off the shelves from Jack Ma. I mean, I, I hope people realize that China is not this great open capital society that they thought it was.